I think I'm going to talk about something that I was thinking about the other day and this was um, brought up by my sister <clears throat> she said that her utility bills are going up to £500 a month in October which is absolutely insane and it just sort of triggered some things in me and I thought how many years have I tried to get off the grid and get away from society and why and this is it this is why because many years ago I saw this coming and I knew that we were all going to end up in a complete mess at some point I didn't know why I felt that way because at the time they didn't appear to be anything amiss do you know it was just a normal life but I started prepping many years ago and I got laughed at and I got laughed at for growing food I got laughed at for foraging for food because people were saying you can buy a lettuce for 20p in Morrison's you can buy any anything that you want for next to nothing but not anymore you can't <laughs> you know I went shopping last night night before last and spent 60 pounds and only got one bag of food for 60 quid and fair enough I got expensive stuff but like um, for example the salmon was four pound and I get some flax for smoothies and that's five pound so yeah I, I buy expensive things but still it never used to be that expensive and I thought people mock people like me who choose to live in a van and it's it's old and it's a bit decrepit and it's not that great but do you know what it serves a purpose I work 26 hours a week for minimum wage so that's what £9.50 an hour you get so when you think about that that I mean it's I don't think it's a bad wage if you're living like me but if I was living in a flat or a house I wouldn't afford to live like that because you've got all your utilities and if they're going up to like £500 a month that is just insane I, I'd never afford to live and I think a lot of the actions that I do I don't always know why I do it and it's always a retrospect where I look back and think I think I was guided out of a situation and I was sent into another situation because something's coming and I'm getting ready for it so leaving the rat race half leaving the rat race because you can't fully leave it because we need money and amenities and we, we need stuff from society you can't just walk away from it totally unless you completely you've got everything that you need and I'm nowhere close to that but over the last eight years I've I've gone back to living like we did when we were children because when we were children we didn't have double glazing we didn't have central heating and I don't even remember having hot water I, I always remember boiling the kettle to wash your hair in the sink and to wash up because if you wanted hot water you'd put the boiler on and the boiler only went on in our house to, uh, to for bath night which was once a week and that's what I remember and people have forgotten that we come from a generation where that's how we just lived and to us it was normal I mean I remember waking up in winter with ice in the bedroom window inside and we used to put our fingers on it and scrape it and make patterns on it <clears throat> but we were used to that sort of hardship and then over time even the poorest people in this country got used to a standard of living that even the middle class and the wealthier ones didn't have in generations prior and I thought it's it's quite sad that we've got used to living a life of luxury even as poor people when I say sad I don't mean it in the way you think I mean it's sad because we've got used to it and forgotten how to live another way and so we hold on to that and there's going to be so much suffering because of this utility crisis and it's all deliberate 
I do not believe for a second there's a shortage of anything at all. It's just pure greed and it's control. And I think it's disgusting because there's going to be so much suffering. And, and I think a lot of people are going to die this winter because if, if you're faced between rising fuel costs and rising petrol costs and rising food costs and everything else how, how does the average family live and there's going to be so much people who are just not going to make it and i think something inside of me many years ago said prepare for this because something is coming and <clears throat> it's not going to be good and you've got to learn how to survive now I consider myself the richest person in my family even though I live in a caravan on a minimum wage part-time job and the reason for that is because my pitch comes with the job that I've got so I don't have to worry about rising costs of anything because I don't pay for nothing apart from half price electric and because that's going up it's make it, making me look at how much I use and use it in a different way so for example on an evening now when it gets cool instead of putting the fire on which is what I'd normally do I just get into bed and then I don't put the fire on and that fire will not go on unless it is Baltic and when I do the kettle I only put enough water in for one drink so I'm not boiling a full kettle all the time and I think what's, pe what's going to happen is people are going to be forced to go back to living how I lived when I was young. And that is on a more basic level with being more mindful of what you use and how you use it. And it's the only way people are going to make it because otherwise they're just not going to. And I can just, I feel quite sad for people because it's like <clears throat> when the... NHS was uh, brought into place which was a, an amazing thing for the average uh, person because prior to the NHS you had to pay for private health care and the average person couldn't afford that but along came the um, DWP and that took a lot of people out of real poverty and helped them like with disability and people who wasn't working at the time and things like that the problem with it though is I come from a place where you've got generational families who have gone onto the dole and take, taken it as a lifestyle choice and, and that's all they're used to and so each generation's just gone on the dole and they've just gone on the dole and there's been no aspirations and you know, there hasn't been anything in, in these people that say, I'm going to break free from this because it is a generational teaching. And my family was lucky because we never quite got to that because my parents worked. And But a lot of the people around me stopped working when I was a child because the benefit systems came in and, and then you started to see people going on to the benefits and staying on it and then their children went on it now of course I'm not talking about everybody I'm generalizing because there are people who would, wouldn't dream of staying on benefits and stuff like that but it is a learned behavior but the problem is <clears throat> I think that was all by design as well because you get people used to something you get them addicted to it you get them to believe that's the only thing that's out there for them <clears throat> and so that's all they know they don't know anything else and then you take it away and that's what they're going to end up doing and I do believe this and it's another reason why I hold on to jobs as much as I can because I have had times where I've had to sign on and I've hated it but I've appreciated the help but I've hated it because I felt like I'm being held to the government and they can just take that away whenever they want and the last time that I had to sign on was during the first um, episode of what's going on. Now, I won't say the words because they take my videos down every time I say the wrong thing. So, you know what I'm saying. It, it was a, f a couple of years ago now 
when everything just stopped, didn't it? And I lost my job that I'd only just started and I didn't get furloughed and I had to go and sign on. And as soon as I signed on, they came at me and said, oh, you owe us, I think it was two and a half grand from 2008. And I said, I don't owe you nothing. Oh, you know you do, uh, because you claimed working tax credits back then and we overpaid you. And I'm like, hang on a minute, where's the proof of that? I always gave you evidence of my earnings. I always showed you exactly what I earned. You've had 20 years or whatever to sort this out. You don't just come back 20 years later or whatever and say we, you owe us money. But apparently they can and they do. And this is what's going to screw people up. So they get rid of all of the jobs and then they get you all on universal credit. Now, when they bought that in, it never dawned on me at the time what it actually meant. Universal means everybody's on it. Everybody is on it. And it's credit. And we're going towards a credit system. And that credit system will be um, a point allocation, which means that you have to earn those credits. So you've got to be compliant and do as you're told. Otherwise, they're going to just stop your credits. And I, this is just me being political right now, and I don't care. But... I think they're trying to eliminate the middle class and just eliminate the poorest. And because the poorest have become so cowed down, and I'm generalising again because there are always rebels everywhere, but the general consensus is that people have been cowed down and so they accept crumbs and they accept that they're going to do this and, and they have to have that and they're not getting this. And I think it's quite scary in a way because it's like are we just going to sit here and take whatever's thrown at us you know people are really going to struggle they are struggling already you know the food banks here when i first came i volunteered to join the soup kitchen because i was living in my car and i was in between jobs but they felt sorry for me and said you're not volunteering you're gonna have a meal so they made me eat while i was there and it was kind of busy, but now there's a waiting list because there's so many people using it now. And the food bank, which used to be a few families here and there, a few individuals using it, has now got a waiting list of people. And that just shows you in this short space of time how many people have sunk to an all new level of poverty that there wasn't in before. And it is really scary because it's like, how far can this go? I was watching a video last night about China and how they control so badly there that they can't even stand up and, and rise up because the last time they did was in, oh, what's it called? T Tiananmen Square or whatever it is called. I can't remember the, word, the name, but apparently um, a lot of the youths stood up I think it was in the 80s that, that this happened and they all stood up and, and rebelled and a lot of them got killed by their own government and that is what's coming here and it's like when are we all going to rise up and say we're not taking all this rubbish you know Tesla created free energy for the masses we should have free electric and if anybody doesn't know anything about your rights then i suggest you go and look at i don't know if it's still around but it was called the white rabbit trust and i think on facebook there's, a, there's some groups as well that says the banking's a fraud and all this stuff but we're not supposed to be paying for utilities in residential homes it's only supposed to be the industries that pay for it so a lot of people are getting wise to this and saying i'm not paying the bills and letting the utilities remove the meters and then getting their own ones put in i'm not in that position anymore i don't need to worry about that i think uh, when i get a new van at the end of this season i'm going to look into getting solar panels and maybe a little wind turbine on the top and create my own electric because this is where it's all going we need to be able to grow our own food and barter with each other and 
not rely on food banks and stuff because they're for people who can't do things, you know. But it's just sad that we've come to this state and we seem to be slipping back into the Victorian times. And how long will it be before enough people lose their homes and can't afford to live anymore because the cost of rent is going up as well, the utilities and everything else. And the average wage does not cover the cost of life anymore. So we're going to go back to mass house sharing where everybody's having to get in lodges whether you like them or not. And we're going to end up sharing rooms with people because we can't afford to live on our own. So I've actually found a niche, you know, and people laugh at me. Not everyone, but some people laugh at me and go, God, you live in a tin hut. And I'm like, yeah, for free. Who's the fool? You know what I mean? <laughs> and not only that, when my minimum wage, when I lived in a house, I was lucky if I had £10 a month left, you know, to go to the next month. I was very close to the edge. If I'd have lost my job at that point, I would have lost everything within three months. But here, I can save money on a part-time wage. So people knock it until they realise that, hang on a minute, this is more of a middle class thing than a working class one now because I can afford to live on my own and not many people can unless they're professionals and they've got good incomes. But a lot of people are struggling. And it, you know, when I go down into Auburn and I'm seeing more and more people looking dejected and, you know, especially when I go shopping, it's like people are walking around looking as if to say, can I afford this now? Can I buy that? And it, yeah, I'm seeing more of it happening in front of my eyes. And I think with the rising cost of everything, people are just going to end up imploding and then hopefully exploding and I hope when they explode we take down this system because it does not work I do feel for the sake of humanity we should go back to the basics in, in a lot of respects because, because we've also become a throwaway society and we don't appreciate all the things that we have and we buy crap we don't need when, when I got rid of my house I had enough things for three houses which is disgusting so I've been hoarding in the house. When you live in a little caravan, you can't hoard because the space is too small. So even if I tried to hoard here, it wouldn't take much stuff for it to be overwhelming and then I'd have to get rid of it. In a house, <laughs> and especially a big house, you can fill it to the rafters and you don't realise how much stuff you've actually got. So maybe it's just time to get back to basics and start recycling clothes and things. And Luckily, I've saved my sewing machine. So when I get my new van, I'm going to put my sewing machine up in the awning and start learning how to make my own clothes again from recycled clothes. So I'll just take loads of clothes, tear them up and just sew them back in my style. And foraging I'm doing. But what I'm going to do as well, um, I never thought of this. When you eat fruit, keep all the pips and the stones and dry them out. And then when you go for a walk, throw them everywhere. <laughs> so some of them might plant. And, and apparently that's what they do in India. And that's how they have um, food on the sidewalks and in the forest. So that's what I'm going to do is put some of my seeds in the forest on the walks that I do. So next year, when I do my foraging walks, I've, I know where the food is and what it, what it is. And I think it's important to do it. And learn how to grow your own food as much as you can. Even indoors you can do some stuff like herbs and stuff. And if you can barter with other people who are doing it. And then recycling clothes, furniture, and learning how to cut back on electric use and gas by going back to the old-fashioned ways of, like, getting into bed, wearing more clothes, just stupid stuff. I've, I've sat in a house before and we've all gone, oh, it's freezing, and we've put the central heating on and the fire and we've sat there in T-shirts, you know, and that, that was during a time of, obviously, 
I could afford to do that and you didn't think anything of that. I remember my gas and electric bills being £5 a week and I had central eating and everything. To go from that level to where it's going now, it's just insane. So, yeah, maybe it's time we all stepped outside of the box and started to look at ways to keep warm, to save money on food by cooking from scratch and making more than we need, freezing portions and all this sort of stuff. But we're going to have to learn because otherwise there's going to be so much suffering. I, I, it worries me, especially with my family because my family are all minimum wage workers and they're all already on the edge. And you know what I mean? There's, there's a certain point where there's going to be a collapse of everything because you can't keep on living like that. So, yeah, political, but... Why not? We might as well talk about these things, might we? So I'm going to go now. It's my one day off this week, so I'm making the most of it. The sun has come out for the first time in I don't know how long in Scotland, but it takes till dinner time to reach my pitch. So I'm going to go now and enjoy the sun. So bye-bye.